Um, my name is Sohit. Um, I'm a partner in an international strategy design firm called Business Models Inc. Um, we are present in uh, seven different countries, and I live in Adelaide here. Um, and one of the things that we think about, I guess, is how do we design the future for organizations, for community, for society? What does it mean to create in this new world? Um, we've come through a whole range of uh, books that we have come over the few years. The first one, Business Model Generation, brought out the Business Model Canvas, which is now used in all startups, corporate innovation firms, everywhere. And we've been continuing to take that forward into the new world. Um, and uh, we just launched our new book, Design a Better Business. And I think it's a real connection between how you think as a designer, as a maker, and how do you make actually business models. So that's, that's what I'm going to talk about today is how do we combine those two things together. Um, we are very passionate about uh, using tools to create better businesses. And we give all of, our, all of our tools out for free. So if you go to our websites and our books, you can find all our tools very connected to the maker's uh, movement in, some, in the same way. It's all creative commons. And our goal is to actually enable more people to use these tools and skill set to build their better business models. Um, and fundamentally, the point that I want to make today is that even though we see technology as a key role, uh, actually technologies don't disrupt. It's business models that disrupt. So we need to go beyond technology. We need to think beyond technology if we want to actually create value in this world. Um, and it's important to love what we're doing from a technology point of view, but if you want to create the next industries, we want to go beyond technologies. Um, this is a map of the maker map in the US. And you can see the hub of activity in the US now. And it's actually created a, almost a renaissance in terms of what jobs and economic growth and, the, and a whole eclectic movement which is forming around in the US. And I think uh, this is a great example of what we want to see here in Australia, is how do we kind of replicate this stuff here? How do we take that energy that we are seeing today in the Maker Fair Adelaide? and take it forward. Um, to do that, I want to tell you a story. And the reason I want to tell you a story is that I think um, we strongly believe that business models are a story of how you create, deliver, and capture value. They're not, not always about money at all. And uh, you may not want to make money out of it, which is also totally fine. But it's actually about value creation and delivery. So um, a great story, of course, is to start with the story of uh, Brad Pettis, uh, which you may all know is um, in 2009, he wanted to look at um, how do I, how do I want to use a 3D printer. So he said, where, where do I go and find a 3D printer in the market? What do I do about it? Um, and he wanted to be part of the maker's movement like we all want to be. And he went to market and he found this uh, printer from Stratus, which was, you know, uh, $200,000, $300,000. It was absolutely uh, expensive to buy and he couldn't afford it. So he and his team went ahead and said, how do we then make something affordable for us? went to the garage, used open source materials, and came out with this, the first commercially viable 3D printer around $1,000. Um, this, I guess, is the real step change in the 3D printer movement, where we went from $100,000, $200,000 to almost $1,000. Um, that started to, uh, went ahead, they raised money, and uh, you would, uh, they created what is now MakerBot uh, Replicator, which is pos potentially the most famous 3D printer, which is actually just sitting outside right now. <laughs> Somebody's showing that here. And I think that's the power of what it is, is possible right now in the world. And uh, funnily enough, um, you know, these are the kind of stuffs which can create uh, new ways of creating, uh, helping people, right? If, uh, you know, you, to create something like this, you can work with the person who's disabled and right now prototype, create, and test, and make something happen locally. Um, and this machine, which potentially will change the world, um, is actually was brought by Stratus. Stratus. So it's a funny thing where they, they saw that they couldn't actually replicate what these guys were doing. And almost for half a billion dollars, they bought it in less than five years. Um, so the world is changing very quickly, where you, know, you can build a half a billion dollar business in four years, which is phenomenal, starting from a garage. Um, and the reason why this is happening is because there's a significantly um, huge challenge coming up in terms of how originally we used to make. The car industry is a great example where we used to have huge amount of capital distribution tool set. But all of these are now democratized. Um, tools are actually very powerful. Um, Steve Jobs had a very nice quote. He says that computers are like the bicycle of the mind. So the reason the internet is what it is, the web is what it is, and why we can connect to all of this globally is because computers made that possible. 
They democratized what is possible in a large room to something that we can do in our desktop, to a laptop, to our phones now. And I think we are seeing the same democratization of tools in our um, uh, other tool sets. So if you look at robots, they've gone down exponentially in the last uh, 10, 15 years. Drones, sensors, 3D printers, all of these are actually exponentially coming down in cost, in capability going up, and that is creating a new opportunity for makers um, in terms of what we can actually create. And, and, and as my Marshall McLuhan would have told us, you know, we make tools, but tools also make us. So actually this ability for us to create tools and then the tools recreating us is going to be a very interesting aspect for the next 10 years. Um, but also money, you know, money is absolutely important. Um, Pebble uh, watch, if anybody is fam familiar, is one of the first smart watches which came out. And they came from the maker movement. But they went to Kickstarter and then brought this idea to life. And they raised $20 million with crowdfunding. So we don't have to go to the traditional makers of funding to make it happen. In fact, um, this is a Maslow CNC, which is like a $500 CNC machine where you can carve wood out of it. Uh, you just have to digitally design what you make. And it's live on Kickstarter right now. <laughs> if any of you want this uh, for 500 bucks, you can go to Kickstarter right now. It's actually on live right now. So this is the future where we can not, don't worry about importing from China our furniture. We can sit down here and design furniture and just make it where we want it. And that, that's the kind of future we are seeing now. Um, but also distribution. You know, when, when MakerBot came out, um, you know, they were building on this where it takes days and sometimes weeks to reach millions of people nowadays. It doesn't take years and years. So Thingverse is a place where you can just upload all your designs and tools and copy them and recreate them and then make them on your MakerBot. So these kind of open platforms are changing what you can do from a distribution point of view. Um, Etsy, if you're all famous with, if you're familiar with that, is uh, the great marketplace for handmade goods. And that's actually recreating the ability for us to distribute sitting anywhere in the world. You just have to make it and sell it. You don't need supermarkets. You don't need distribution partners. You don't need anybody else. The internet is your friend. Um, but also, Etsy is a new way of working, which is uh, B Corps, where people believe that business is a force of good. Uh, B Corp certification is like um, fair trade certification for coffee. You know, it means that you're focused on environment, social, people, not just about making money. I think that's the way of the future, is not just about making money and combining these skill sets to create a better future for us. Um, so uh, I want to end this section of the presentation saying the technology has a great capacity to enable, and we need to really build on it. But technology on its own is not enough. What we need is spaces. How do we create the business models of maker spaces? Because technology on its own is not enough. And to make this happen, um, I want to touch upon the idea of the rise of the creative economy. You know, the mad march in Adelaide is a great example of the creativity of Adelaide coming out. But we don't connect the mad march of Adelaide with the maker movement which is happening today, the maker fair, and the industrial challenges we have. But this is the future for us, is combining the creative ability that Adelaide has with, with the potential for to create a global business. Um, and we need to go beyond STEM. We need to think about STEAM, where art and design are as important as uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and we need to combine all of this in a, in, in a very, very, very integrated way that will create the future opportunities for us. So to enable these spaces, um, you know, we need spaces because, as Steve, who's um, one of the participants in the Tampa hackerspace, calls it a gym for the mind. You know, the ability to actually go somewhere and build, tinker, experiment, optimize, hack, play, that's the ability that will make the future makers happen and not sitting in, in, in your own, own room or office. But it's also about community and collaboration and learning and sharing and being open. So this ability to actually enable people to show up and do things, but also be part of a community is absolutely critical to make maker spaces happen. Um, and maker spaces is not just one space. I want to emphasize that there could be all of these. It could be in a school, it could be in an art place, uh, it could be a lab. There's a whole range of things that are maker spaces or hacker spaces, whatever language you want to use. Um, and it cannot be just one thing. But if you can enable all of this as a community, I think we have something really amazing. And we need to move beyond just thinking of this as a uh, thing in Tonsley or a fab lab in the city. We need to think of the entire Adelaide and South Australia. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the elephant and the six blind men. It's an old Indian fable. 
you know, the king calls the six blind men and says, look at this, what is this? They said, um, oh, we don't know. So they go and start touching it. They touch the uh, leg and say it's a pillar. Then you start touching the tail and say it's a snake because they can't, can only see it. To actually create maker cities, we need to work like that. We need to bring a whole range of things together. It's not just about one aspect of the community or society or business. It's about bringing all of us together in one place to actually make this maker city happen. So space is actually very critical to motivate, to enable people to work together, as much as technology is to actually enable from a technology point of view. Um, and lastly, I want to come down to the people. People are the heart of this. Um, you know, we believe that you, we individuals can actually recreate our own business models. You know, we are losing jobs uh, in Adelaide, but actually that is an opportunity to recreate who we are, where we want to go, and how we want to actually achieve this. It's not about losing 20,000 jobs, it's actually about creating 2,000 businesses, which will find those jobs all over the country. And it's not about worrying about where the next big company will come from, but where the next entrepreneur and the maker will come from. And irrespective of how you see yourself, I think you're all makers. We are all makers. And we can come from this at different angles, but we are actually all part of the same story here. Um, and lastly, I want to end with this, uh, you know, if you look at the map of the world, and you spin it around, you know, Australia is in the center of the world. Adelaide is in the center of Australia. We are in the center of the world. We are not some small city and country down under. In, in the digital and the global world, this is the future. So we need to start building things on, on a global basis to be able to do things on day one worldwide. I think that's the future for Adelaide, and that's the future for makers. So we need to really enable people, but also believe in people's capacity to create. On that note, I want to end today. Thank you.